How's it going everyone? Javita here with another release overview, this time for testing 230. I kind of feel like my head's spinning a little bit because I'm still like wrapping my head around release 229. I felt like that just went live and already we have a new patch on the testing servers. Uh, this one is for the planetary shopping UI, which is, wow, this is, this is cool. I really am looking forward to this. So there's actually not officially patch notes yet. The community has kind of thrown together a thread of sharing all of the information that they've kind of discovered on this. So uh, the accuracy of all the information is going to be a little bit not you know, officially off of the patch notes, in other words. Uh, but we do have several comments from one of the developers, or mainly Luca, that kind of verifies and clarifies some of the, the information here. But uh, you can just hit K, and for any item, you can just, you know, there's now a buy from and sell to or the planet that you're on. So this isn't like universe wide or anything, which I actually really like that. You at least have to go to the planet to actually kind of get an idea what the prices are there. But uh, let's go over, how about uh, take a look at, did I misspell? Oh, here we go, just need to scroll up. Uh, so yeah, I set up quite a few shops for compacted orts. So right here you can see the basically the 16 best prices for that planet. Uh, if you wanna go to one of these shops, all you have to do is just click and it sets a waypoint and you just follow the waypoint until you get there. Now obviously this doesn't take into account uh, portals or anything like that. So if you just blindly follow the waypoint, you might be traveling for a good distance. Uh, however, it does list the distance right there, how many are on the shop stand as well as the price, and it even lists the patrons, which if I, let's see here, the patrons equals the the daily customers for the last week. So say the same person comes back each day of the week, uh, they'll be counted for each visit uh, for each day. But if they visit twice in the same day, then it only counted once. But that gives you at least some idea of ongoing how much traffic is this shop getting of people actually buying and selling uh, so it gives you an idea of like oh well this shop is really active where this other shop is not active so uh, it gives you a little bit of idea of like kind of the reasonability of the prices and uh, accessibility as well so but as far as visibility of the shop stands, uh, an amazing feature is that you can control that via the beacon level or the shop stand level. So right here, there's a new option for shop discoverability. Uh, you can turn it on and off. So very nice. It says uh, buying and selling plants requests are discoverable. So it's turned on and yeah, people will be able to find your shop stands. But wait, what if you have like a maze and you want uh, certain shop stands to be undiscoverable? Because, you know, if you could see, oh, this beacon has, you know, a gold or let's say rift hammer for free listed somewhere and you can just set it as a waypoint, that's kind of like cheating. So you can come over to any of these shop stands, go over to options, and then there's now an option for plinth discoverability. By default, it defaults to the use beacon settings, but you can turn it on. So even if you have it turned off at the beacon level, you can turn it on for select uh, shop stands, or you can disable it if you just want this one shop stand to not be discoverable. So very, very nice feature right there. So as I said before, the best 16 prices will show up in the list. Uh, it's ordered by, of course, price, then the number of items, and then patrons. So if you have, say, 100 shops selling, you know, at the exact same price for a given item, the person with more for sale will be higher up on the list than uh, the others. And if you have somehow a shop with the exact price and the exact same number of items, then it bumps down to patrons. So then the busier shop will be you know, given priority or be higher up on the list. But uh, I don't see that ha happening uh, too often. Moving along, one of the devs did mention that the underlying system does support filtering for forged uh, gear, whether or not it is forged, and then even like, I guess, 
Forge bundle. So you might be able to queue up like, oh, I want to see diamond hammers that have the all-arounder boon and plus damage and durability or action speed. Uh, that sounds like it'll eventually be an option. It's not available in the user interface just yet, but the underlying system uh, does support that capability, as well as filtering by colors and durability for items. So uh, just because it's a good price and it's like half dead, yeah, I might want to pass on that hammer. So uh, very nice that that's at least a possibility at some point. Uh, the underlying system is optimized for price ordered queries. So in other words, if you want to like order it by the number of items rather than the price, it, the underlying system doesn't really support that or it would run slower to try to implement it. And that also includes like paging through uh, like say you wanted to see, OK, the 16 best prices, you're not interested in those. You want to see the next 16. Uh, you can't really page through and see all of the listings, uh, which would be nice. But, you know, I understand they have to keep this, you know, kind of somewhat responsive. But uh, it kind of moves on to basically my wish list is exactly the things that they say aren't really supported. So filtering by distance, uh, quantity. So that would be really nice to say go to a mall and yeah, I only want to see what's within 300 meters of me or 500 meters to get an idea of what are the prices at this mall, not just the entire planet. Uh, as well as quantity, say if I'm, you know, if I'm buying trunks, I'm interested in getting thousands of these things. I don't want to have to go to, you know, 16, 20, even, you know, 40 shop stands buying out five and six trunks here and there to finally be able to see the ones that are selling thousands of these things at a time. Uh, and then also like being able to set a minimum price would be handy just because let's say you have somebody being kind of smart alecky and setting a uh, rift gear for zero coins and then surrounding the shop stands in glass or something and somehow making them inaccessible, uh, which would essentially remove that item from this feature altogether which wouldn't be cool. They did mention that people abusing the system would be, you know, warned, maybe even eventually banned from being able to have their shop stands discoverable. So it's not recommended to actually do that, but it would also be nice if there's something that the end user could do to mitigate the possibility of the problem. And then, you know, a filter by settlement, that would be interesting. It's the same concept of filter by distance. Uh, Given how settlements are, eh, I'd probably throw that one out, but it would be kind of an interesting option. But just to kind of show this off a little bit more, let's say I want to find low, low price uh, the shop stand, and yeah, it's just right over here. So very nice. Uh, that is another thing is, you know, if you set up multiple shop stands within the same beacon, uh, it only takes the best price for that item from that beacon. So trying to sell the same item in the same beacon for different prices really doesn't do anything for you. But uh, say want to find, how about shop D? That's just so cool. <laughs> but uh, okay, I think that kind of wraps everything up. This was Javita. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. And if there's anything you didn't like, please let me know down below. Also, if you like my channel, want to get cool perks, check out my Patreon page. Until next time, peace.